Hey everybody, welcome on in for the Clay Share Day online pottery celebration extravaganza as it continues throughout this day. We have Katie Miller joining us on behalf of Amico and she's going to show us how to make some underglaze transfers. So I'm really excited. I've seen Katie's work. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, you got to follow her. We'll share all of her social media info as we get into the demo. But we don't have much time. We only have about 30 minutes. So I want to get us in and get us over there with Katie. So let's do that. Hey, Katie. Hey, Katie. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, so I'm Katie Miller. I'm in Fargo, North Dakota, and I'm a full-time artist. So um, I've been doing this transfer technique for about seven years now. Um, and I'm here to show you guys how to do it. Um, so I use... I'm just going to jump in and kind of go fast because it does take a little bit of time to do it. Um, so I use Amico Velvet Underglaze or their Liquid Underglaze series. So this one's Liquid Underglaze. This one is the Velvets. Um, I've tried a lot of different brands and Amico seems to transfer the driest. Um, other brands seem to tra transfer kind of wet. Um, and Amico is just like really reliable and super easy. So that's what I use exclusively. Um, my work is really colorful. Most of my work is actually colored slip and it's not underglaze at all. So for example, this mug here, the only thing that's actually underglaze on this mug is the lines. So this is a little lucky rabbit that lost its foot and you can see the other rabbit on the other side. <laughs> so it's sort of uh, a little humorous, um, kind of graphic. Um, but the only lines, or the only underlays I use is the lines. Everything else on here is colored slip. So I'm gonna just take you through the whole process. So um, the first thing you need is a paper that you can do transfers on. There's a lot of different papers out there. To do this with, um, I use newsprint. So some people use rice paper, some people use newsprint, some people even use tissue paper. Um, I like newsprint because it's cheap, it's easy to find, and it's pretty durable for layering lots of colors of slip on it. Um, so you can draw your design on paper. You can see I have a faint drawing on this one. Well, I'm just going to angle this down a little bit so you guys can see. Uh, what I do when I'm drawing transfers is get this in the middle here for you guys. Um, I just fill up one of these little squeeze bottles with underglaze. There's nothing added to this underglaze. It's just Amico velvet underglaze in a squeeze bottle. Um, I like this style slip trailer because the tips come off and you can change them. So if you want like a really fine line, you can get a fine line. If you want a bigger line, you can get a bigger line. But all you have to do is trace your drawing onto newsprint. And of course, with practice, you'll get better at the flow of this. It's all about like speed and pressure when you're doing it. I'd also recommend like not drinking a lot of coffee right beforehand and being kind of shaky. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but what I like about this process is all of all of the work is done on the paper. So if you make a mistake at this point, you're only out the paper. You haven't actually drawn on any clay or pots or anything like that. So it's very um, low cost, like low investment with your time. So you can see that's what it kind of looks like. Um, it's, a, it's a thicker line because it comes out of the slip trailer bottle, um, but it will, it will transfer flat. So now that this is drawn on here, this needs to dry completely. Um, in my studio, I have tons of transfers that are ready to go. Um, recently, I started switching my process a little bit from hand drawing everything to screen printing. That's a little bit more complicated, but um, for many years, I just did the hand drawn transfers like you see here. Um, from this point on, like everything's the same. The screen printing is just a little, a different step, different technique. Um, 
But once you have your transfers made and they're dry, um, they'll last for a very long time. So as long as you keep them flat and you're not like crumpling them up, the underlays will just stick to the paper um, and then they're ready to use. So here's, for example, like I have hundreds of transfers from mugs that are ready to go in different designs. This is a pocket knife design on the top. Um, and I just, I just paper clip them together and then rubber band them. But you can see that I have tons of transfers that are ready to go when I'm ready to decorate pots. So all of these transfers are ones that I've designed, I've drawn, and then made into transfers. So for every form I have, I have a different transfer. So this shape paper fits the mugs that I make. Um, you know, I have different shapes of paper for plates, for bowls, for different size mugs, uh, for large vases, for small vases, et cetera, et cetera. Let me know if I'm going too fast. <laughs> Um, okay, so today we're going to do a transfer. This is a swan design transfer that I do. Um, I'm going to, from this point on, the underglaze is on the paper, and now I'm just going to paint it in with different colored slips. So again, this is the velvet underglaze on here, and you can see that it's not like flaking off or anything. Some brands of underglaze I've found will flake off your paper. So if they do that, just switch to Amico. Super easy. Um, Amico sticks to the paper. You don't have to worry about that. So we're going to make a mug. Again, use like one of these little squeeze bottles. This one has my coral color in it. So this is going to be slip from here on out. Everything that I do on here is going to be slip on the newsprint. So I'm going to fill in the little areas with the colored slip. And I usually work from like the smallest details to the biggest areas, which is sort of opposite of actual painting because you usually do like large areas and work down to your details. But with this process, everything is going to be backwards and in reverse. So the first thing that you put down is actually going to be the closest thing to you. So you're putting down your foreground and you're working your way to your background. So the last thing we're gonna do on the newsprint will be the background. Um, the lines are the first thing that is the foreground or the closest thing to you. So now I'm gonna use a brush. So I use a combination of those slip trailer bottles and a brush to paint in the design. Um, the front of these swans have like a little touch of color. So I'm adding, this is actually a light blue probably doesn't look like it because this slip will be less um, saturated than like underlays will be. But once it's fired, it will turn to a light blue color. So what I, slip recipe do you use? I know folks are wanting or asking about it. Do you have uh, your own slip that you mix up or do you just have a recipe that you follow? So um, I actually teach a class on making slip and making different colored slips. And it's available on my website, which I is- I shared that so you folks can check it out. There you go, yeah. Um, but the recipe I use is called Santa Cruz White Slip. It's, by, it's from Ben Carter. Um, okay. I low fire everything, so it's a low fire slip. And if you are firing mid-range, it's not a great slip. <laughs> So, I use, um, yeah, so uh, so if you're mid-range, maybe Pilcher Slip is one that I use a lot, and that can go to 10, so that's a, a nice wide-ranging, but you can do mid-range too. Sure, yeah, there's a lot of slips that have like a big range. The one I'm using does not have much of a range to it, but it sticks to my clay really well. Um, whatever clay you're using, whatever temperature you're firing to, you want to you want to match your slip to that temperature in that firing. Um, you can also use an your own clay. Like if you are using a white clay and you want to dry out yeah. your strap, make that into slip, you can do that. And of course there's like commercially made slips out there too. And I cover all of that in the class. It's like a pretty, like a two hour class um, that you can, you get access to all the time. And we go through like making different colors and, 
and how to actually mix a recipe from scratch and also other alternatives to it. So um, it's been like my most popular class that I've ever taught. Um, a lot of people love it. So. so if someone can't get slip and they have underglaze, could they use Amico underglaze instead for this sure. part, the coloring? Yeah. Yeah, I do get that question quite a bit. Um, you can do underglaze transfers on newsprint. Just transfer underglaze only. There, it has like a different look to it. So what I like about using the slip is my pots are like completely covered with color. So um, that would be really expensive for me to use all underglaze. Um, so slip is much cheaper and it's also much more opaque than underglaze, but there's a lot of examples out there of just doing underglaze transfers. Um, you know, I've customized this technique to like how I like to work. And I think everyone needs to think about their own sensibilities and what they like to do. So for me, it's fine in my studio to mix up a big batch of slip from scratch. But if you don't have access or like the space to do that, I totally understand that you'd want to like change some of those variables to fit your aesthetic and your um, preferences. Okay, so this now is all covered. You can see that I've gone completely over the lines. Uh, if I flip it around the other way, you'll see that you can still see those through. And now the paper is starting to get saturated and wet. Um, you can see that halo of water. So what the, what the slip is doing right now is it is um, softening the underglaze so that the underglaze will transfer and stick to the pot as well as um, it just getting everything to kind of the same temperature. So, so at this point, um, it's a little bit shiny, it's a little bit wet, if you can see that part there. I don't wanna keep layering colors because I will smear everything that I've done before this. So I've got white swans, there's a little touch of blue on their bellies, and then their, their beaks and cheeks are this like bright corally orange color. Um, so I'm just gonna hit this with a heat gun so we can keep going. Normally when I do this, I have like a dozen of these out. So by the time I get through painting all of them, um, I'm not waiting for things to dry, but for demo purposes, I'll just speed this up. So the last thing to do on this transfer before we can actually put it on some clay is to paint the whole background. So I'm gonna paint this whole background. I'm gonna do this one pink. So you can do any background color. The example I showed has a white background, but I'll show you a couple other examples too while we let this dry. And you can see I'm being like really generous. I have a really soft um, hockey brush that I'm using to paint the slip on. I just want like a nice, even but generous layer across the whole thing. And I don't want a stiff brush because that's gonna like pull everything that I just painted off or like potentially smear it. So there's that. I always pick it up at this point because paper has, um, oh, what's the word? It has a orientation to it. Um, so if you notice, depending on like which way the paper was made, um, there will be a buckle in the paper. You can see that like parts of this are getting wrinkled. So to release that buckle in the paper, I just pick it up and kind of stretch it back out. So sometimes it will be this way. Sometimes it will be this way. It just kind of depends on how the paper was made and how I cut it up. So just like a nice even coat of pink on here. And while we let this kind of dry, I'll show you a couple of examples while I mess that all up. So like here is the Lucky Rabbit one again, but this one has like a dark charcoal color for the background. So you can see like how different that looks. Um, occasionally when you go really dark, you'll see that the slip can become a little bit more translucent. So you can get more of 
a painterly or brushed look to it, which can be really nice. So if you're really into layering colors or like building up your surface, you can do that. Same thing with this one. This one has a dark green background. So you can see on that leaf how parts of the dark green are showing through. So depending on how you like to work. Um, most of my colors are pretty solid and flat, but I don't mind that little part of painterly quality that shows up. And then of course, like on a white background, things are just very bright and kind of poppy. Um, so you can see that. So the red color that I was using for the beaks of the swans will actually brighten way up and it will be as bright as the red on the outside of these flowers. Um, questions before? Yeah. So you just do a clear glaze over once you make the transfer and after you bis fire it, you do a clear glaze and then fire the piece to low fire temps. Yep. So these have like white liner glaze on the inside and then a clear glaze on the outside. I use red clay. So I like to leave some of my red clay showing. So this is unglazed. And then of course the bottom is unglazed and I usually add some kind of texture down there. So do you fire to a hotter low fire like to cone 01 or cone 1 and not um, uh, or do you do the yes. low fire? Yep. So, so you're vitrifying the earthenware, the low fire clay, which yeah, yeah. which is goes with the next question because someone was asking, um, do you have any problems with any leaks? But because you fire hotter, oh. you're vitrifying it. So and also my glaze fit is like really good. Perfect. So the yeah. line of glaze that I use is actually a myalica. And whenever you're doing low fire, if you do do low fire, you wanna make sure that it is watertight. Um, so I have a myalica that's like a very um, strong tin glaze um, that lines all of the pieces that could potentially have water in them. So if you're worried about that, just put water in something and set it out on a table for 24 hours and see if it is slowly leaking. Um, but my clay is pretty tight and um, it doesn't leak, so. Yeah, that's like always a major concern. People are like, oh, low fire, you can't do it. And it's like, yeah, actually you can and it's fine. <laughs> there's, where there's a will, there's a way, right? Yeah. You can make it, can make it work. Folks are wondering what pigments you use for your colorants. Um, so I use a combination of oxides and mason stains to make the different colors and different percentages for all the colors. I think I have like, uh, I don't know, 15 colors in my palette. Um, so I have a whole cart of different colored slips. Um, some I use a lot of, uh, like pretty often and others I don't use as often, but I can show you sort of, um, you can see on this shelf, those are some, some of the tests that I've done. Um, so it just takes a lot of testing. There's no shortcuts to figuring it out. You just gotta test and see what the colors look like at different percentages. I mean, that's part of developing your own line of colors, right? You got to test them and see how they look and what works and, and doesn't work. Exactly. And of course you can also take like a couple different stains and mix them together to make like even more colors. So similar to like mixing paint, you can like cross blend colors and different things like that. Um, I'm just gonna hit this with a little heat gun action just so that we're ready to do the transfer. here that is ready for a transfer on it. I have another mug here that is just done. Um, when I do my transfers on my mugs, I put them on a little flower pot. So that's why it's on here. It helps keep it round when you're pushing or ribbing the transfer on, onto the piece. I mentioned this briefly, everything is backwards and in reverse. So even though we can't see anything right now, 
um, because the background color is painted on here. The background is actually going to be behind everything. Um, so if you were doing, if you're designing a transfer, um, when the swans were on the paper, they were facing left. And now when I do the transfer, they'll actually be facing right. Um, I'm just gonna complicate this a little bit more because it's also upside down. So backwards, reverse, and upside down. Uh, <laughs> but, but if you're doing this, what I wanna say is like, think about like letters or numbers or things that may need to be like reversed or mirror image because you only make that mistake once. Like once you transfer it wrong once, you never do it again. So, so with this transfer, I'm gonna flip it upside down. You can see the swans are upside down now because my mug is upside down. Um, and then I always try to hit it like right in the center or close to the center of the transfer so that when I wrap it, I know that the middle part is, is pretty close to centered. And then when I wrap it, it won't get like all off and crooked. So it looks something like this. So I'm just gently place, oh, the other thing, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention this before. This is, this is a stage that I want the transfer to be at. Um, if it's too wet or shiny, um, it will just smear when I do this. Again, you'll figure that out once you've done like hundreds of these. Um, but this is what I call the pudding skin stage. So it's kind of like a satin sheen. It's not like completely dry. It hasn't changed colors yet. Um, you can see the other side of the paper. Be very careful here. The paper is very saturated with water because everything's wet. So, um, so that's the stage you want it to be at. So I'm just going to gently kind of place it before I press it in place. I don't want it to like fully stick quite yet. Because then I can still kind of adjust and move if I need to. Um, so it looks something like that. When you design your transfers, you always give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. So I have like a little bit of an overlap here. I can see that there's a swan head here, a swan butt over here. To me, it's more important that the swan head gets on here. So I'm gonna make sure that that's on there and then figure out the end part here. But there'll be a seam like wallpaper. Um, I'll try to show you. I'm gonna start ribbing from the the middle up and then the middle down. And the point of this is I'm just squeegeeing on this transfer, trying to get any air bubbles out and trying to get that, that slip to stick to the clay. So I'm using a red rib because it's nice and soft. I don't want it to like tear through the paper. This paper is wet and fragile. Um, Depending on the shape that you're doing, you may encounter wrinkles. So doing transfers on round things are more difficult than doing transfers on flat slabs. Um, doing transfers on very round things are even more difficult, but can be done if you dart and think about like where, where um, wrinkles or folds might need to be. So just think about it as like, you're putting in a flat piece of paper on something. So that is why the sides of my mugs are nice and flat because they're easy to put a transfer on. Did you throw that mug? Is that a wheel thrown or a hand built one? Um, so I actually recently started slip casting. So um, I used to wheel throw all of these, but I have been trying to figure out ways to to increase production. <laughs> um, so I've been doing some slip casting and these ones are slip cast, but they're based off of my wheel thrown mugs. Yeah, it looks wheel thrown. So I would have guessed that. I wouldn't have known it was slip cast. It looks great. Yeah, so it's slip cast and then trimmed and yeah. So it still has sort of that, the, the feel of the hand a little bit. Okay, so when you start peeling it off, that's when the fun part is. Um, as you start to peel, you, if you go slow, you'll be able to tell if it's not fully sticking. So like here, it's not. If that's something that you like, you can just rip it off like a Band-Aid and you'll get lots of marks like that. If you wanna make sure that your whole image transfers, then you'll want to just go a little bit slower, really do some pressure and ribbing. You can also do a little bit of like 
damp sponge on your paper if your paper is getting too dry or if it's not releasing. But I don't mind like a little bit of um, wear to it, a little bit of like weathered look. So that's usually um, the parts of it that I get kind of excited about. And I love where the seam is on the work. Um, with these, if they stay as a cup, then you'll get to see where the seam is. If they turn into a mug, then that's usually where the handle is placed, like over the seam. So, so yeah. That, so is that leather hard right now? The piece that you're, you're putting the transfer on? Yeah, so yeah. Um, because it was trimmed already, it's like at the stage of right after being trimmed. So I basically like work out of damp boxes and I just keep tons of stuff in damp boxes until it's ready to transfer. Um, and then they just dry after that. So um, these will get handles and turn into mugs. Um, they could just be cups too, but I think they will be. I think I'll turn them into hand, like handled mugs, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this will hold, this will actually hold probably 16 ounces, which sounds kind of crazy, but um, I like a big cup of coffee. I have two toddlers. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There's <laughs> nothing, especially with two toddlers, there's yeah. nothing wrong with the coffee to keep you going through the day. So we have about uh, two minutes left. So I don't know if you have anything else you want to share. It went too fast. Um, I know you have a lot lot to cover. Yeah, so I guess the last thing to share is like I always roll over these um, to make sure the slip is really stuck down so like final thoughts or if anyone has questions um, but yeah I usually give it a, a nice little roll over get any air bubbles out and to make it really stuck. I will say like when you're if you try this and this is like your first attempts you're probably gonna have tons of air bubbles your slip probably isn't gonna stick that well um, that's normal. It's going to take like quite a bit for it to feel natural and quick and easy the way that it does when I, when I do this. Um, so just keep trying because every single time you do it, you learn something a little bit new about it. It's all about timing. Fantastic. All right. So I shared Katie's website on all the, and all the chats we have going and she has a really great workshop you can, you can get. And if someone signs up for your workshop, they get it forever. Is that my understanding? Yep. Like, yeah. Yep. Awesome. You so you get that. It comes with a through, through. Too. Oh, wow. So, and a lot of people have taken your workshop. They are saying they loved it. So okay. um, it's not a clay share workshop, but it's still a great workshop. So people should check it out. Check yeah. out Katie's work too. So I'm sorry we don't have more time. We'll have to have you come back when we have more time and we can hang out and, and do more things together. So yeah. just have a good rest of your day. Enjoy the clay share, everything. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So fab from Katie Miller joining us and um, doing a really great way to do underglaze transfer with Amico underglazes and slips. And be sure to check out our website and sign up for that class. Why not? Treat yourself. Take a workshop. It's good for you. You'll learn something. All right. So we're going to take a little break and then we're going to come back at 515 with Diamond Core Tools. We have a demo from them. And I do have a couple last minute things I was told that I have to add to the day. Speedball just reached out to us and they want to donate five $100 gift cards because it's our fifth birthday. And so we're going to be giving those away in addition to everything else we're giving away. And uh, Clayscapes is doing four $50 gift cards. So sponsors, you got to stop doing more giveaways. I'm, I'm going to be here for like three hours giving stuff away tonight. Jeez, I got to go to bed at some point. Hi right, everyone. We'll be back in a few minutes with Diamond Core Tools. We'll see you then.